First thing we do when we're putting a track together is start with the beat. Then we add something from a record like this. Having got that into our sampler, we play it. And that's it. Cold Cut is a top British sampling crew whose most noted accomplishment has been the combination of a New York rap track with a very different sort of sound from halfway around the world. Cold Cut sampled an obscure Israeli record by the Yemenite singer Ofra Haza and used her voice in the Eric B. and Rakim dance hit, Paid in Full. Haza knew nothing about it. Ofra benefited from our use of her voice on that record in the long run. It gave a lot of a big push to my single in Ninalu. People was curious to, to hear, to know who, um, who is that voice. I think sampling is a bit like, uh, to compare it with another art form, is a bit like uh, photo collage. James Brown may be the most sampled man alive. His sound, and especially his beat, are literally the soul of much current rap music. A lot of people use the record Funky Drummer. Oh, and one group I know that used it a lot is Public Enemy and um, The Rebel. And this is how they used Funky Drummer. They had an 808 kick and other stuff to it to kind of add more flavor to it. They say that the sampling and the imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So uh, let's take James Brown for instance. James Brown was finished. James Brown was old. Rap and sampling made James Brown new again. Sounds are one thing, but yeah. riffs really involve creativity, you know, and it's like it's, Tom Loki, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I like what he's done with yeah. it, you know. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people probably don't know that that was, well, maybe now, but they don't know that that was, you know, Jamie's crying off, yeah. off the first Van Halen record. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't really know how Eddie feels about it. Working all week. I think some rap records have done that, where they've sampled pieces of like what Van Halen and yeah. Little Riffs. I think that's wrong, because that's, I think that's plagiarism. The fun of rap is to be able to take a Hall & Oates track, or, you know, a Bee Gees tune, and find something funky in it, and then make it into something new. I mean, it's so easy to do that. Any kid in their basement can do that with a sampler, a, you know, $300 sample, sampler nowadays. And uh, it just doesn't seem quite fair you know, because it really is stealing. But sampling isn't the sole province of rappers or teenage experimentalists anymore. Nowadays, even the stars are sampling. Why should anyone want to sample somebody else's sound? Is this just a case of artistic laziness, or is it a whole new kind of art? Where rappers like, well, they don't want to just settle for a band playing their music. They like to hear the original house coming off the record. Just because we like that piano sound maybe better than the sound, the sound we have in the, our presets or whatever, in the factory samples, right? It's got a nice ambience to it. For some rappers, it's the simple recognition factor inherent in a familiar sampled sound that most attracts them. The rappers feel that they're going to take any shortcut they can. Take something popular that's already been proven, it'll get hot on the streets and the radio will have to play. Because you go to a lot of trouble to make records and uh, it'd be like taking bits of uh, somebody's painting and putting them into yours or, or something, you know, or a book, like, tell, well, they'll just lift a chapter out of, you know, Moby Dick and put it in here, that's all right. <laughs> it was only, it was only four paragraphs. There are clear-cut laws that protect print and film copyrights, but sampling is something new, and the law has yet to catch up with this powerful technology. It's there, it's, uh, and you can't, you can't legislate against, it's like trying to legislate against refrigerators, you know. 
you can't really. Everybody, once that, that once it's technology is there, everybody will use it. But legal problems are beginning to crop up. Not all sampling is outright theft these days. Much of it is now cleared with the original performer and paid for, much the same way a guest artist on any other record might be. Back may not cost you any more than using some of the people who made that first record. If you want Bob James to play, you know, it's going to cost you money, right? Play him. If you play him, you don't have to come in and you pay him. Maybe it's easier. Not paying a sampled performer can lead the sampler to court, which is where the Beastie Boys are right now because of their unauthorized sampling of Jimmy Castor's voice on his record Hey Leroy, which they used on a song called Hold It, Now Hit It. The Beasties contend that Castor's sample is just a spice in their song, not the meat of it. But Castor doesn't care. To him, it's just stealing. Yo, Leroy! Hey, Leroy! What? Yo, mama! It's like up in the air, it isn't really officially decided how much is stealing and how much is, is making it into something new. It's being litigated right now. Until a judge says that you can or can't do a specific thing, then everybody's just really guessing. One of the major reasons why rap music is so successful is because of the background, not the rap. And, uh, and therefore, I think the guys who created that background and who created that, that acceptance, they should be paid. There's little arguing anymore with the contention that performers who get sampled should also get paid. If you've got a record playing all day and then somebody wants some of that money and it's their record, how mad can you really get? You know what I mean? What do you mean you stole my car out of my backyard and put a kid on it and was driving it around because <laughs> I wasn't driving it? What do you mean by that? That's my car. I want money for it. Regardless of how old it is. If you go and take that off a guy's record and put it on yours, I think you should make an arrangement that it's some kind of copyright infringement. On De La Soul, Say No Go, we had Daryl Hall's voice on there singing Say No Go, and we heard it and we said this needs to be cleared. But another Della Soul track, transmitting live from Mars, wasn't checked out quite so carefully, and that's led to legal problems, specifically a $1.5 million lawsuit filed by the Turtles. We didn't clear the Turtles' soundbite because, first of all, the use was so minimal that no one would ever think that it was an infringement. They digitally uh, manipulated it so that our sound source is actually different from the sound source of the Turtles' record. So there's no re there was no reason for us to think that this, was, this would constitute any kind of infringement or that anyone would even complain about it. They've made such insignificant changes to the sound recording that it is still infringement as far as we're concerned. And they have violated our exclusive rights in the sound recording. Quelle heure, Quelle heure est -il? of music to be used over and over again without it being paid for has to be established now and if we can establish where that is drawing the line at maybe that's what we're doing with this yeah, it's an interesting area isn't it I think that obviously if you're borrowing someone else's music or sounds then you should a do so with their permission and B they should be recompensed for having created something that you're now selling it seems pretty logical but then um, so do a lot of things I guess interesting subject on to the new video from T